Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today we're going to be dyno tuning this Honda Del Sol. It has a uh, B16 motor, uh, bone stock with ARP head studs, and just an eBay turbo kit. So we're going to see what it does. It has a uh, full exhaust on it, which is like a two and a quarter or two and a half inch exhaust, I believe. Uh, so that is probably going to limit us in power <coughs> a little bit. Um, I apologize uh, in the beginning of the video I am very sick right now uh, so I've just been trying to do my best and uh, today's the first day I actually got out of bed but I'm trying to push through and get some of this stuff done so uh, yeah bear with me guys um, I appreciate everybody's patience and uh, understanding we have done a few things to this car when it got dropped off uh, we did fix uh, some idling issues I actually made a separate video on fixing some of those issues that we were having with the car. We also swapped out the fuel injectors for a set of flex fuel style Hunter Tune injectors. We did a valve lash and we also drained out all the pump gas and we are gonna be tuning this car on E85 with a Neptune Demon. So with the Demon board in the ECU, you can actually either use HTS or Neptune and this guy kind of wanted the tune to be a little rowdier so we're going to tune it on HTS for him so we can have that popcorn mode and the uh, big fireball pop and bang and two step. Uh, this is another car that got dropped off that I will be working on probably in the next video. Uh, this is an all motor car that definitely needs a little bit of love. We have to fix up uh, some issues with it as well. So I actually off camera I was driving the car on the dyno and um, everything seems to be doing very well. Um, this car, when it came in, it was kind of like sketchy. <laughs> we had to fix, oh yeah, the, the turbo oil feed uh, we fixed as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna get in and do some driving in the car and kind of show you guys what I'm doing on the computer and uh, we'll go from there. And then once we get the car pretty close on the tune-up, we will start logging power runs on the dyno. Sorry, I have the flashlight on. There's probably a really shitty glare. But this thing idles very well. Uh, we got good oil pressure. And the wideband is heating up right now. We are using an innovative wideband on this car. One thing I do go over a lot of the times when I start tuning on these things is uh, I'll just make sure that the car's not going to get hot. We've got our TPS set. Uh, TPS has already been calibrated. The intake temp sensor is working. The coolant temp sensor is working, um, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, so this thing's running pretty smooth. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to drive the car. I'm going to slowly take off, make sure we get low RPM load. Make sure that that is uh, good. A lot of times, uh, a lot of base maps and stuff like that that you'll see, uh, right when you take off the car, some, sometimes will stutter, and that's gonna be your areas like below 1500 RPM, uh, you know, low vacuum area right when you take off. So that's usually the first thing I do is I get the idle done, and then just lug the motor in first gear. And as you can see, the air fuel is spot on. So we'll slowly increase the throttle here. And the air fuel is still perfect. So we're just gonna kinda map trace and watch uh, all of our cells to make sure that uh, the air fuel is where it needs to be. Like right here we got a little lean spot we'll have to address. A lot of these base maps that I have created uh, are pretty close out of the box. So I already did a lot of the hard work. Right here, we could buy stab it a couple percent of fuel. And then, as you're increasing the throttle, you want the air fuel to go richer, obviously.
damage the entire boost on a range of up to columns uh, coming into it. The couple columns right before boost, uh, that's like right when you first stab it, you can see it's like 13 will pop it. It looks really good. And then when we when it actually came into boost, <coughs> it's where <weird. laughs> oh. uh. it's where it uh started going rich. So that's where I pulled some 5% out. We'll do another little run right here. got pressure up here hot top hose hot bottom hose so our thermostat is operating then we're gonna check our overflow here make sure they're not pushing any coolant into here when boost comes in which it's empty so we're not having issues there <clears throat> so next thing we'll probably check is that just the coolant level uh, it might be a little low but we gotta let it cool off for a minute And then I'll just kind of visually inspect, like, you know, do we have any coolant leaks? Do Are we uh, leaking anything, which it actually looks like might have something leaking. So I'll just be feeling around all these hoses and just kind of seeing uh, if we got a water leak coming from somewhere. Because if you guys can tell, we do have some coolant coming out back here. Oh, found it. This hose right here on the back of the throttle body doesn't have a clamp on it. So we will get that clamp figured out. Yep. That's why you gotta monitor stuff as you're driving, guys. You gotta monitor temperatures and everything like that so we don't kill a head gasket or anything like that. So uh, we'll just have to fix that little clamp on that coolant pipe or that coolant uh, hose on the throttle body. <coughs> And uh, yeah, we'll continue tuning. All right, guys, so we got the coolant leak fixed. We got the coolant topped off. And uh, now we are just going to start doing some power runs with OVTEC and uh, make sure that everything is looking good. And uh, I got the dyno synced up. So now I'm just gonna take uh, my wireless keyboard so I can activate the run and uh, log through everything right on the wireless keyboard from inside the car. So, HTS actually has a uh, <clears throat> cool feature too, where I can actually have the dyno stuff right on my laptop, but I haven't set that up yet. Uh, I got a big enough TV, I think I can see it. <laughs> but I will have to set that up sometime soon. So I'm gonna do uh, a couple runs with uh, VTAC off.
everything on the inside of the car looked phenomenal. Uh, I'm gonna verify what the power was and uh, boost rating from the dyno. But in the car, it looks like we're on like eight pounds-ish, eight to 10, and uh, it was like 1180 air fuel. Uh, no VTEC, remember guys, I'm just getting the low cam map dialed in, and then uh, we will see where our power starts to kinda, where VTEC wants to be, and that's where we will place VTEC and then start tuning the VTEC side. We actually did not even get a boost reading on that uh, last pull, guys. Uh, but our power curve is looking really good so far. Uh, you can see right where it levels off, and that's where VTEC should carry it the rest of the way. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to get the boost sensor working, do one more rip just to verify where the boost level is, and then uh, we'll go from there. Five pounds of boost and we're making 160 horsepower so uh, let's turn VTEC on and see what it does with uh, some VTEC any guesses guys post your guesses down in the comments how much more power it's gonna gain when I turn VTEC on and fuel is dialed in perfectly and everything like that so I might take a couple runs to get all that sorted out but uh, I'm gonna turn VTEC on now for a pull see if it changes the boost level see if it changes uh, really anything and I'm gonna just hopefully uh, everything's pretty close already but right, let's go into parameters here I'm gonna set VTEC at 4500 uh, to start and then we're gonna have to closely monitor our air fuel ratio when it crosses over into VTEC to make sure that it's not gonna be too lean or too rich so now VTEC is active, we go back into here, double check our ignition timing. We are running pretty conservative ignition and uh, the fuel looks to be on par and it should be pretty close when I go and hit it. So here we go. kicks in that's actually not tuned well it's better to have everything kind of be smooth and uh, linear instead of it kind of slamming with the face oh yeah she picked up some power buddy making about 200 wheel now 192 same boost level boost did not change at all um, and the tack on the dyno is way off so we are probably making more power than this because, let's see here, 50? Yeah, we are definitely probably making more power than this. It's just the gear ratio is not synced properly on the dyno right now. Unless I really only revved it to 6,500. Let's see here. Go back on my log. We'll see how high I revved it. up top. I revved it about 8,000. Oh yeah, she's making more jam. Five pounds of boost-ish. 221 horsepower. That's pretty good, guys. I'm actually pretty happy with that so far. 
That's our curve so far. You can see that the car is kind of starting to die off above 7,500, uh, but nonetheless, it is actually working good. <laughs> I was only revving at 6,500 before. I thought I was revving it uh, higher, but it definitely wasn't, so. Not bad for five pounds of boost. 221 horsepower, 174 foot-pounds of torque, and we could probably make more power on this boost level had it not had a full exhaust, but we're going to, that's probably what a lot of this like choppiness up top is. Um, I might do one more on this boost level and just add like a degree of timing and see if that smoothens out a little bit, but I think a lot of the waviness and stuff is gonna be coming from the um, fact that the car has a pretty choked up exhaust. guys this little dull soul is doing pretty good i'm actually really happy with how everything is going so far nothing in the overflow head gasket sealing uh good oil pressure no weird noises no um yeah we had a little bit of smoke uh in the engine bay earlier just from that coolant leak just kind of stuff burning off but now everything seems to be doing good the turbo seems to be doing okay um yeah i think it's gonna be time to turn the boost up here in a second but just adding that degree of timing guys made the power curve look like okay so this is what it looked like before up top you guys can see like it it's just a little wavy uh you know and it's got some rocks and bumps to it so putting a degree of ignition in it didn't gain any power um but it did make everything a lot happier so you can see just how much smoother that is now. Um, so yeah, we're making 221 horsepower on no boost and conservative ignition with two, two inch exhaust. So um, we're gonna just give it a little bit of boost now and see kind of where, um, maybe we can get this thing up to like 15 pounds or so and see if it makes that 300 number. That's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, the gauge inside the car is reading about eight pounds. The dyno, which is the most trustworthy in my opinion, because we calibrated the sensor and everything, is saying six. So I'm gonna try to just maybe give the Holman, he's got like a little Holman boost controller on this thing. We're gonna just kind of give it a little bit. Just gonna turn it just a little bit and see if it picks up any boost. And I'm gonna do a couple pulls until we get the boost setting up and then I'll pick up in a minute. Once we got the boost controller at its spot where it's actually gonna make some adjustments. All right guys, so I got the boost controller doing something now. Uh, we're gonna do a power run and see if we can make some more jam. moving up uh, in power slowly dialing in some fuel things it is uh, still kind of rich at this boost level uh, but we are gaining power nonetheless so just made 275 and uh, yeah I'm gonna just pull some fuel out of it honestly see what it goes in
Alrighty guys, that's probably gonna do it for this thing. Uh, for now, I actually just talked to the customer and verified like, hey dude, do you really want me to keep pushing on this thing? Or do you think we'll be good at like 300 wheel? And uh, he agreed that 300 wheel will be plenty. Um, I feel like 300 wheel on my dyno is a lot faster than what guys actually think uh, is 300 wheel, so I mean, uh, 300 wheel maybe we'll take this thing out for a rip on the street when he picks it up just to kind of show you guys like what 300 wheel looks like on the street i feel like that'd be a good comparison uh but this thing should have no problem burying all third gear on the street so turbo's doing good we got a lot of stuff ironed out and uh we got a lot of stuff and we made pretty decent power through a two and a quarter inch exhaust so uh and a muffler and a resonator and pretty small downpipe so this thing would probably make 350, you know, I would say like 325 to 350 with just an exhaust change um, and no other, no other change. But we do have a very solid power curve and uh, everything is doing very well. You guys can see the manual boost controller issue that we're having. Uh, we actually had <clears throat> the same issue on the, uh, on the other car, this wagon over here in the back of the shop right now. That thing... I did not film any of it, but we had a whole day on the dyno with that car and nothing but issues. So we were running like five different types of manual boost controllers on it and ended up having kind of the same boost wave, boost curve as this. This this ugh, this boost wave and boost curve is nowhere near as bad as uh, that car was, but pretty much what that car was doing is it would spike up, fall off, and then come back up again. Where this one's like peaking 11... 0.9 pounds and then leveling at like 11 pounds and then it tapers down to 10 at the top end so that's what a lot of this fluctuation in the power curve is too is the boost moving around because of that manual boost controller but honestly man pretty goddamn good power 297 horsepower on this dyno is quite a bit probably be 400 wheel on somebody else's yeah looking good guys looking good so hopefully you guys enjoy the video ah, we did get quite a bit done on this thing and uh i'm gonna go home and go to freaking bed because i don't have any energy <coughs> left and i'm sick and i got a big day tomorrow coming back out here and putting a clutch in that car finally um finally gonna do that we finally got all the parts uh brand new dual mass flywheel brand new clutch kit and then i also am going to work on this car as well and get this thing up and running prime so have a great night and a better tomorrow we will see you guys later and uh drop a like subscribe if you guys are new and uh yeah have a good night